Bhakti Chakra Vibhava Prabhavam Shankaram Numaha Tam Shakti Chakra Vibhava Prabhavam Shankaram Numaha We have seen the 40th Sutra. The discussion was on the enlightened yogi who has experienced the fourth stage as Turiya. So he has uh, established his mind with that the fourth stage. Then what are the external and in internal experiences. So this was the discussion. So he, what he experienced externally, he experienced internally. And the internal experience of consciousness is extended externally. So this was the sutras 39 and 40. Now the 41 sutra. <coughs> when there is no external activities, the extroversion complete, completely ceases off. Then all the birth and death, the cycle of birth and death ceases. That is what the 41th Sutra is saying. Tadaro dhapramite stakshaya jivakshaya Tadarudha Pramitehe Takshayad Jiva Samkshaya Tadarudha Pramitehe So one has established or assented. Arudha means assenting. So one has firmly assented. His mind or his intellect, his awareness in that fourth stage. So he is called Tadarudha, Tadarudha Pramiti. <coughs> so Tadarudha Pramitehe, that uh, jnani, uh, enlightened soul who has ascended the fourth stage and he established there. It means there is no uh, coming and going or the changes of the stages. So it is the complete uh, complete stability there. Tadarudha Pramiti Takshayat So with the ending of deserts. All the manifestation or manifested forms. It means the separate thought process is completely stopped. So, takshayat. If there is no chance of a separate thought process, so the mind will not come down or mind will not go externally. So that is takshaya. So in this stage there is no difference between subject and object. This is what 
we could understand from this. When the Zathana starts, the experiences of difference between subject and object, that is the beginning stage. But in this stage, there is undifferentiated or identified Shiva and Shakti. So there is no subject and object. What we call as subject and object in this philosophy it is called as Shiva and Shakti. Shiva is consciousness, all pervading consciousness, self consciousness and Shakti is the active form of consciousness. So this is Shiva and Shakti. So the active form of consciousness together with the body and mind or the external uh, instruments become power in the form of action. So this is now there is no Shiva Shakti uh, separation, subject object duality. It become one. This is called Nirvana. In other words, in other stages it is called Nirvana. So then what happened? Jiva, jiva Samkshaya. So Jiva Samkshaya. Jiva means the individual consciousness, the empirical consciousness. So there ends the existence, the separate existence, separate identification of empirical individual consciousness. So three things are mentioned here. The first one, the stage of sadhana he has established. The second one, the reason for that means ending all the external activities, thought process. And third one, the effect, the after effect of that. So, this uh, concept is discussed in almost all other philosophies, the concept of Nirvana. <coughs> It is said, if there is no thought process, then the mind rests itself on the self itself. The so mind has no other choice to move. The objects which are carrying mind outwardly, the objects become one with the subject. How it is possible, yeah, it can be detailed, they understand in a, the method how we call it as uh, emerging process of consciousness. So when thought comes, we can ju just be aware about the consciousness, how this thought process starts. Each thought which we experience are external thoughts or internal thoughts. External means the thoughts related to outside objects. Internal means the thoughts are internally knowing the object, the object in the mind like memory and uh, recollection, all those things. And while meditating, concentration, this all, internal thought process. So this uh, shifting from one thought to another because of object. If we have a single object for many thoughts, suppose we have an object for hundred thoughts together, so that is called concentration. Because means that each thought is carrying the same object. 
so you don't find normally we don't find any separation of thought so that is considered as one thought so this is all in different levels even the i-ness which we call as ego is also connected to this thought process because we we are carrying the feeling of i i am this is with this thought only. so that has been stopped completely so there is no chance of separation from subject and object and the difference and non difference is different stages of thought as i said when we talk about outside objects the difference is separately felt that we know i am the knower the subject and the object is separate from me as we see objects through eye sight they are all separated so in the thought process but when we uh, recollect or identify iness with this thought we cannot separate it like i am when i say i am my ego my personality in this case we don't feel any separation actually it is not true even in this iness the so called ego as a separate thought process so this is the deepest level of internal thought even that thought stops here so there is uh, no separate identification as individual therefore it is said jiva kshaya jiva samkshaya if this uh individual identity exists or it takes any form it can again bring thoughts the previous one or no so therefore uh, ultimately this empirical identity should be when uh, removed it should vanish so then only we can say that the yogi is firmly established in the subjective consciousness so from there from there uh, it is always he is free from all the activities so this form of experience is the potential state of consciousness so this is what the experience he has continue with uh, this uh, subject now after experiencing this stage how can the yogi maintain the body because now there is no external thoughts and internal thoughts and difference and non difference nothing exists then how this body is maintained the next sutras uh, they are talking about that the so, prarabdha we call it prarabdha or jivan mukta jivan mukta one has experienced or one has realized the goal while in this body So this is the stage we are talking about now how the body exists for this jivan mukta bhoda kanchuki tada vimukto bhoya padisamah parah bhoda kanchuki tada vimukto bhoya padisamah parah bhoda kanchuki tada vimukto bhoya 
భూద కంచుకి తదా విముక్త ఈస్ లిబరేటెడ్ ఆబ్వియస్లీ హిస్ డిసర్స్ అండ్ ఆల్ అదర్ ఫంక్షన్స్ ఆఫ్ మైండ్ అండ్ బాడీ బికమ్ ఏ కవర్ మేయర్లీ ఏ కవర్ ఫోర్ హిమ్ భూత కంచుకి భూత కంచుకి మీన్స్ ఎలిమెంట్స్ ద ఫైవ్ ఎలిమెంట్స్ అండ్ ఇట్స్ మోడిఫికేషన్స్ బికమ్ ఏ కవర్ ఫార్ హిమ్ ఇట్ మీన్స్ ద బాడీ విల్ బి మెయింటైన్డ్ బై ద ఫైవ్ ఎలిమెంట్స్ దెర్ ఇస్ నో కనెక్షన్ విత్ ద ద లివింగ్ బీయింగ్స్ దట్ as jeevan mukta the body is maintained by the panchat bhutas actually otherwise also this body is maintained by five elements only the our body is also maintained by five elements but we are aware about that and we care for that the functions in the body is done by five elements but we think that we are doing it because of our identification with this five elements we take care of the body actually the all process of maintaining maintenance of the body is is taken care by consciousness as well as five elements mind is a uh, mediator as uh, mind gives all the suggestions and uh, the support for this maintenance that is there therefore it is said this bhuta kanchuki bhuta bhuta kanchuki's body or bhuta means elements kanchuki can be said as covering the cover of the body the the, the skin of the cover of the body the bhuta kanchuki tada vimukta bhuya padisamaha paraha he is uh, is liberated he vimukta and now he become one with shiva pati samaha pati spashpati is like shiva only in upanishad it is said brahma vit brahmaiva bhavati one who knows brahman becomes brahman so the knower and known is not separated same same thing happens here also here uh, instead of uh, brahman we are we use as pati pashpati so he is uh, one with pashpati he is like shiva paraha this is the highest stage this is ultimate now there is nothing to achieve nothing to change and the mind has no object to go and work with therefore it stands with this knowledge of experience mind is getting more freedom and uh, more happiness than before therefore it can't move out this is the experience we uh, experience when we practice samadhi when we meditate on self we have this experience of uh, no oneness with the consciousness so this is drashtuhu swarupe avasthanam it is said in yoga sutras ho kanchugi bhuya prati padi samaha paraha so we can consider this is the highest stage
So in Upanishads, when we talk about Vedanta, we have another uh, process or another method method of uh, learning this. We say once yogi experience the highest knowledge of Brahman, then that is ultimate. There is no need for any other sadhana. It is called Sakrat Vibhata. What once reflection or once it is reflected as knowledge. But uh, before that, there is a long preparation. The sadhana is needed in different stages. You start from Yama Niyama and with all this sadhana, tadushtaya, mumukshutva, everything is there. Very seriously, intensely, the sadhaka practiced. So after a long practice, his mind become completely pure or with the complete uh, uh, fulfillment of all the sadhanas, the completion of that sadhanas. That is sattva guna. So in that stage, Pare Brahmani, so he is one with that Brahman, Pare Brahmani Yasudhi. So his uh, mind is clear and he is one with that Brahman. So that stage is discussed in another uh, way, another uh, uh, level of uh, understanding here. That's all. Naisargikaha prana sambandhaha Here comes another question. If this is the case, now this yogi intentionally is not taking care of the body. He separated himself from the body and activities. So in that case, why the gross body is not falling away? We should fall right away. If, uh, if we are not carrying it, then how can it stand? How can the body be maintained? So then it said, Naisargyaha prana sambandha. The sutra says, you see, this uh, breath of life is inherent. Naisargikaha, it is inborn. It is maintained by universal life force, which is called prana. Universal life force maintains this body, not only our body, but also all the bodies of living beings are maintained by this universal, the cosmic life energy. So that energy will automatically maintain this body because it is naisargika. So the body mind and body prana connection is not made by this individual empirical soul. It is made naturally. This is the naisargika. The connection with this. <coughs> because it is said uh, in the uh, creation theory, it is said that in, even in uh, Upanishad, Atmanaha Prano Jayate, from consciousness the first transformation is Prana. Because as we said early, Earlier we had a discussion with the consciousness. The active consciousness is forming into the form of intelligent and mind. And then it is forming, the action continues, then comes prana. 
and with the prana and this modification of mind, all other uh, manifestations of body comes out. Like uh, all the limbs of the body, internal and outer, outer. Similarly, the outside objects like trees and all other outside objects also formed from this cosmic prana and cosmic intelligence. We call it as cosmic intelligence Hiranyagarbha. And Hiranyagarbha has this cosmic power as vital power as prana. So both together forms all the external uh, no, creation what we see. So both are maintained by now we are not doing anything to maintain outside objects. So they are maintained by themselves or by the nature. If the tree is maintained then why not our body? So the body is also maintained. It means uh, it doesn't mean that without food and water, body is maintained. It, is, it doesn't mean. So when there is need for food, the body will find the food and the food will be taken. Therefore, there is no separate effort needed for this maintenance. That is what it is said. Therefore, there is no need to worry that after liberation after enlightenment, this body will fall away right away, far right, right then. So it will not maintain, there is no, there is no point of that. So this discussion, as I said, it is there in all philosophies, because we need to know how this body is maintained in this stage. So in Vedanta, in Vedanta Sutras, Brahma Sutras, there are so many uh, different adhikaranas, subject, discussion of subjects. Uh, and it is uh, confirmed that with all this effort, what we do, we can only follow the prarabdha karma. The karma which is active in our body. So the fruitifying karma is called prarabdha karma. The karma which, give, which gives birth to this body and maintaining this body. So that karma will take care of all the needful activities of this body. That is what it is said, Naisargikaha Prana Sambandhaha. So when it is said it Naisargika is inherent, so that if it is inherently built, then there is no extra uh, additional activity is not necessary. So what is made or uh, maintained inherently, we don't need any special care for that. Whatever we are doing, we are only consuming food. Whenever we need to take food, we are taking food and water. Only this much we are doing. Other functions of in, internal functions, we are not uh, doing it. So when we take food, how, what we know, how we know what is happening after the food. We just consume the food and food is going inside and all other function is happening there. Uh, the division of food and making uh, energy out of food and all this, who is doing that? It is not with our awareness. We don't know why, why, how it is happening. So, yes, yes. So, it means uh, the Food and water, whenever it is needed, it is taken. 
it is not regularly they are taking food or uh, if it is they needed they will take otherwise no and uh, that is why i said the because the food consuming and the digestion of the food is also a function of prana so when the prana needs that prana will ask for that and the food will be taken so the separate uh, no it is uh, now when we we are thinking about the uh, food and all our maintenance of the body we are giving too much care of that because we think if we don't care our body the body will die so this is why we are doing all this but that is not there this is the only difference so he will follow the prarabdha karmas whatever karma and whatever facilities he gets accordingly he will take the, uh, the body there and prana will suggest and the mind will work with that so everything will be taken care it is why the, therefore it is said that it is inherent so there is a like we say the subconscious mind so whatever function is happening in the body is uh, naturally taken care by subconscious mind something we when we uh, see our uh, daily life much of the actions of body is taken care by subconscious mind not the conscious mind so unnecessarily we are worrying about it and uh, one has to follow the the constitution of body or the the tendencies of the natural tendencies of the body that's all uh, we uh, the we should not uh, no give too much care or we should not neglect the body the neglection is also not there and too much care is also not there this is the balanced state of that so he doesn't need to do that so he he doesn't neglect and he doesn't take care so very uh, natural uh, style of living that is what uh, meant here so believing that uh, universal force which takes care of everything is important point should be understood here so without accepting the all pervading uh, consciousness and the power of that consciousness it is not possible so we do daily prayers to that principle of life principle so we are praying to the god all pervading god to protect us so this concept comes from this so he is he completely accepted he is completely one with that so he has no worried about that we now we are worried so we are praying to that god so he, he just received it and he has given the body and its action to that uh, entity that saw now with this prana what happens that is uh, just mentioned here नासिकांधर्मध्य संयमात्यपसव्यसौशुशुषुषु नासिकांधर्मध्य संयमात्यपसव्यसुषु with uh, this prana the nasika anta nasika anta which is there in the nos the nasal that is what nasika anta prana it means prana so, because we inhale and exhale with the nos so nos therefore it is called prana the nasika anta nasika anta sanchari there is a definition for prana nasikaanta sanchara so that this prana 
नासिकांतर मध्य संयमात नौ दिस प्राणा समटाइम्स इन सव्या एंड अपसव्या इन द राइट नोस एंड लेफ्ट नोस इडा एंड पिंकला समटाइम्स थ्रू नाइट राइट नोस समटाइम्स थ्रू लेफ्ट नोस तो सव्या अपसव्या सव्या अपसव्या सव्या मीन्स राइट और अपसव्या लेफ्ट तो सव्या अपसव्या लेफ्ट एंड राइट नोसेस एंड मध्यम संयमात एंड इन मिडिल मिडिल दैट इज सुषुम्ना नाडी सो वी हैव थ्री नाडीज इडा पिंकला सुषुम्ना इडा लेफ्ट पिंकला राइट एंड सुषुम्ना मिडिल तो प्राणा चेंजेस वन टू अनदर सो इट इट समटाइम्स इन सुषुम्ना वेन इट इज इन सुषुम्ना it is called in the middle stage so when prana is flowing through sushumna the mind is cool and body is cool the complete relaxation is experienced and there are some uh, activities in the left and other activities in the right the left right brain and right right brain is marking working in the separation in the different activities so that is called nasikantar madhya samyamat samyama means constant practice by constant uh, concentrating on that so if uh, one sadhaka can do this really practicing this uh, meditation by concentrating on ida and pinkala then he gets a special energy so that special energy is wonderful that is why it said kimatra savyapa savya sushumnesu so kimatra is for exclamation it is is not asking anything so kimatra savyapa savya marke you know what what should we say about it so he will get the energy whatever it is there in the a uh, body because he connects himself the prana with the all pervading universal prana so he believes in that so therefore there is no need for these things as earlier in one uh, session i have mentioned this there are so many techniques in uh, uh, yoga practices nowadays we are uh, I'm unable to do with uh, so many reasons so there are techniques uh, to control the prana and take special energy from prana so the pranayama different kinds of pranayama so if you do that there is no need for water there is no need for food so yogi can maintain the body with prana if body is uh, completely healthy it has no disease and no other problems and maintained by pranayama and asanas so all the nadis are clear if nadis are clear then with the concentration of mind prana can take energy from outside so it's possible so there are people they practice these things and not consuming food or even they take they will take like little liquid food something so then they can maintain the prana because prana shakti is very uh, very strong or stronger more energized than the food from the energy we get from the food so that is uh, very famous but it needs uh, a special practice the normally we can't do that so the pranayama and other things should be practiced uh, in a different level of practice that is called samyama here it is samyama is said like that 
and this yogi must have done all this therefore he is having this uh, stage that there is no need for this activities so now all these points uh, about the yogi who has uh, experienced the consciousness as uh, completed we have seen all of them so if he is maintaining this body then that is with prarabdha so he is not worrying about that or he may have special techniques for prana and pranayama and meditations to maintain his body without doing any effort so like for food and other things so these two points regarding this body maintenance uh, have been discussed now the end of this shiva sutra bhuyah syat pradimilanam So, bhūyaha syat pradimilanam. So, constant awareness again and again. Bhūyaha syat means his awareness is constant. It is continuously flowing. There is no break. So, in last sections we have seen that nimilana, unmilana. No, different... Uh, activities of mind so when mind and sense organs are inwardly concentrated then it is called nimilana and when it goes outside working with the objects towards the object it is called unmilana so this we have discussed earlier so nimilana and unmilana Nimilana means closing the eyes. Unmilana means opening the eyes. This is a word meaning. But here the, uh, the intended meaning is inwardly turning back the mind and outwardly working with the mind. So inwardly turning back the mind is called Nimilana. So in Nimilana stage, suppose we sit for meditation, we are in the stage of nimilana because we have closed our eyes and concentrating the prana and mind uh, sitting in a uh, steady posture like that this is in nimilana stage so in this stage we experience some inner uh, you know consciousness some inner experiences that we have but uh, Normally, when in Umilana stage, when we are in action with the sense organs and objects, to, uh, connected with objects, so it is the mind and sense organs are outside, working with the, towards our object. So then, we are unable to experience the consciousness. Or, uh, we don't know what is happening there. There is no discrimination of consciousness and the activity. So we are one with the object. The mind is one with the action. Therefore we call it, this is not the stage of meditation. This is not it's the practice of meditation. But really speaking, one should get this stage where in the stage of nimilana and unmilana in both the form the meditation should continue the concentration of mind should continue so if he gets that that is the stage of enlightenment that stage is called pradinilanam pradimilana the word he used here it means nimilana plus unmilana in both the stage the awareness is constantly continuing therefore it is called bhuyahasya 
bhuya the word bhuya is used for repetition repeat repeated action so again and again so this is what it means now at the end uh, this is the statement the sutrakara makes here the consciousness or the experience of that consciousness continues forever that is the divan mukti now in this process when the prarabdha completes that we call as the karma of this present physical body completes the body falls it will decay and die when the time comes but for this yogi there is no uh, reaction there is no effect no, no no mention about this what is happening so this way he is just uh, living in this body but his consciousness is out of form so this is the stage <coughs> so in this uh, uh, living when when he is in the body he may do some actions some actions of teaching or uh, giving advice to others this he may do but it doesn't mean that he is attached with all those so this is the uh, ultimate stage discussed in all our vedanta philosophy and other philosophies ultimately he reaches here. that is bhuya asya pradimilanam so thus we completed the shiva sutras in a very very summarized way just uh, took the sutras and the word meaning and general meaning of that so we cannot say this is this was a study as a complete study it was just an introduction so after this if someone wants to study then he, uh, he can she can take up the studies with the commentaries of famous commentaries of this uh, shiva sutras that i already mentioned uh, spantakarika spantakarika is a book on this spanta vartika it is said samta spartika spantakarika then in uh, this sutras there is a famous commentary in sanskrit shema rajas commentary that is also very useful after studying these two books at least these two then pratyabhijnya hridayam so there is another book by shema raja pratyabhijnya hridayam this is all about consciousness and its manifestation as functions it is a uh, small book it also has some good commentaries and after that for practical uh, sadhanas one can study the vijnana bhairava with its commentaries so these are all the basic textbooks and after that that ishwara pratyavijna and all those other uh, books are there big books are there uh, by abhinava gupta and other acharyas but this shiva sutra is believed to be the composition of vasu gupta so this we have completed by the blessings of uh, gurus and uh, the shakti chakra the shakti of the power of the consciousness so we stop here with uh, this uh, chanting mantras oh yes
Thank mm-hmm. you.